So now in this next flowchart, we're going to now begin speaking about the other half of this lecture. The lecture is entitled Synapses and Sensory Receptors. We're going to be looking at the idea of sensation and how sensory systems work within the human body, specifically in relation to the nervous system. We'll entitle this next flowchart Sensory Process. We're going to be looking at how sensation happens through the specific mechanisms associated with the process. And that can be basically looked at by understanding a sensory pathway. So we've seen sensory pathways before in our introduction to the nervous system when we talked about action potentials um, in the previous lecture. And we'll just reiterate how a pathway works in terms of sensing something. So simply speaking, we begin by uh, having any individual, whatever and whoever it may be, gaining information. Okay, Some sort of information is gained. And when I mean information here, I'm basically referring to anything that is can be sensed or understood from the environment. So gains info about the surrounding environment. This is a very general statement here, very general statement. It could be that the surrounding environment is hot, that it's loud, that it's bright, anything that the senses can sense. So the individual gains this info about the surrounding environment and also possibly the internal state. You may also sense something internally. That's something like pain. Okay, That might be some sort of beginning sensation that is felt by the body, and that's information that comes from the environment or from an internal state. This is simply put the sensory input that we talked about from the last lecture. That's the first step. If you remember, that's sensory input. In addition, once sensory input has happened, it's useless unless it is sent to the super integrator, the thing that can understand what just happened. And it's basically going to have to be processed by the central nervous system, specifically the brain. And once it's processed by the central ner nervous system, there's going to be then a relay message that's sent to the body, sent back to the body after the processing, and that will result in, hopefully, the appropriate motor response, whatever it may be. Appropriate motor response. If it's too bright, maybe you need to cover your eyes. If it's too loud, maybe you need to cover your ears, etc. Those are all appropriate motor responses that are sent to the arms, the muscle effector muscles, the effector muscles, I should say, from the brain, the central nervous system, as a result and as a sort of side, as a product of the information that was gained from the environment. So this was sensory input. I would consider this second step as integration like we've seen before, and I would consider both of these, the sending to the body and the appropriate response, basically that motor output step that we've already talked about. So this is just a basic review of how a sensation occurs and what would happen after the sensation. Take a look at figure 50.2 to get a good visual understanding of this in the context of sensation and sensory organs. So that's our basic working outline. Let's take a look in a little bit more detail now what this means and what's associated with the specific pathway. The pathway itself contains four major components that you need to understand to understand and uh, be able to recognize what it means to have a sensation. Okay, So a sensation is going to begin with the following component, and that is reception. Specifically, we'll term this sensory reception occurs. And sensory reception, understanding that something has just been felt, happens via a sense organ. Okay, A sense organ could be your eyes, ears, tongue, whatever it may be. The senses are utilized or figured out by sense organs, and thus the reception from those senses will have to be uh, from these this, this specific pathway to begin with. Now, once this has occurred, we basically will state that the stimulus, whatever it may be, or the information, whatever it may be, so stimulus slash information is detected, and we'll say even more specifically, not just sense organs, but sense organs can be broken down into the specific sense cells that they are, uh, uh, are built upon, and also the receptors specifically as well. The receptors will be important here in just a second.
So first, you, re you sensory receive something. You receive something in your sensory, I should say, by the sense organ. The sense organ detects it by the cells within it and the receptors within it. Okay, that's our first part of the pathway. Second part of the pathway is to undergo signal transduction. This is a critical part of understanding anything in regards to the nervous system. Signal transduction must occur for any appropriate sensory pathway to work. What is signal transduction? Basically, when we say signal transduction, we just mean the conversion. There's going to be a very important conversion of the stimulus, whatever it may be. Let's say the stimulus is sound or something that you saw, a color, any stimulus that causes a sensation, the conversion of that stimulus has to be to what is known as receptor potential. And this is something we've seen before. We know what receptor potential is. But why are we converting it to receptor potential? This is the way that the nervous system works. The nervous system can only act, it can only understand what's being input, and only respond to what's being input if it is sent to, the information is sent to it via the language of receptor potential. Basically, this is the idea of having a change in the membrane. A change in the membrane potential of a receptor cell, let's say, and that receptor, upon the change in the membrane potential, will uh, usually encompass something like the flow of ions, right? An influx of ions causing depolarization across the membrane receptor, whatever that receptor may be. Membrane of the receptor in question. So simply put, signal transduction is all about putting the stimulus into the language of the nervous system. And the language of the nervous system is all about receptor potentials. Is the receptor potential going to change in a way that allows an influx of positive ions, thus depolarization, or is it going to change in a way that causes an inhibitory response and an efflux of positive ions? All of that is figured out through the signal transduction that occurs. So we sense something, we convert it to the language of the nervous system, and then we're going to undergo step three, which is transmission. Transmission is also going to be a part of this overall pathway. And this is important because this is when we take sensory information, whatever that may be, sight, hearing, taste, take that information and have it travel through the nervous system. It travels through the entire nervous system wherever it needs to go to be understood, which we'll get to in just a second, as impulses. So remember how we changed this stimulus into the language of the nervous system? We made it into a receptor potential that caused either maybe an action potential or an inhibition of action potentials. That's going to then be further modified to be transmitted throughout, through the nervous system as impulses. And that's typically going to be in the form of action potentials, as we know. Those impulses will either cause something to happen or inhibit something to happen. You may have an unstimulated let's say, sense, sensory organ or sensory cell. And if it's unstimulated, uh, we basically will just say that it's at, res at resting potential. So that says unstim for unstimulated. It's at resting potential. But let's say you have action potentials that are involved in stimulation. If they're stimulating action potentials, they will certainly be involved in depolarization. This is all a review from the previous lecture. So if you have depolarizing action potentials traveling through the nervous system, you are successfully traveling and sending sensory information throughout the nervous system as impulses. Now, what's the purpose of traveling through the nervous system? The end-all be-all goal of sensory process, of the sensory pathway, is to perceive. Senses are nothing unless they are perceived correctly, unless the perception is correct by the brain. Your organs, your eyes, ears, tongue, nose, whatever it may be, they do the job of the mechanical understanding of what just happened. But they themselves don't understand or can figure out what just has been seen. It's the brain, let's say, that understands what's been seen. The brain recognizes that this is a color. The brain recognizes that this is a familiar smell. That's all the idea of perception. And how can you have perception? You must have the information travel through the nervous system as impulses. And how can you have this? You must have that and you get the idea. So let's put perception into words. It's a big, big idea here. This is the idea that the brain the principal, the primary central nervous system organ processes information. It integrates information. 
processes information, sensory information specifically, that was sent to it by those sensory neurons, whatever the sensory neurons are, whatever sensory neurons are being activated. And if you remember, sensory neurons are also called afferent, starting with an A, afferent neurons. So afferent neurons send information to the brain. The brain recognizes that information, processes it, integrates it, understands it, perceives the information, and upon that will allow and hopefully respond to the information via an efferent, starting with an E, efferent pathway to an effector. Okay, that's the basic pathway of a sensory system. Overall, um, last thing I want to talk about here very quickly uh, are the types of sensory receptors. Now that we know what sensory is all about, there are a couple of different types of sensory receptors and they can uh, basically be classified, and I'll just write this on the top, types of sensory receptors based on stimulus. What stimulus can they sense? That's the name, sensory receptors. So it's all based on the stimulus in question. We can state like, for example, let's say chemoreceptors. There are chemoreceptors all throughout your body. Very important in many different processes, but they are specifically stimulated by something and that is a chemical. That's the name, chemoreceptors. Basically what we state is that chemical stimulus, because we are looking at chemoreceptors that receive chemical information, a chemical stimulus of some sort specifically binds to sensory cell receptors. Now which sensory cell receptors are we focusing on here? Of course, these sensory cell receptors are those of the chemoreceptors. And that chemical stimulus upon that binding will then cause a change in ion permeability. It changes ion permeability. Now you should already be thinking, why do I even mention ion permeability? What, does, what role does that have in any of this? Ion permeability is another way of saying membrane or receptor potential. If you're changing that, you are going to then result in either an action potential, which is usually the case for sensation, or an inhibitory response, an inhibitory, let's say, IPSP of some sort. Basically, all in all, the types of receptors that we look at are all based off of the stimulus, and every time that a stimulus occurs, it's going to eventually or possibly cause a change in the ion permeability, so much so that it can be understood or translated by the chemoreceptors into something that is received by the sense organ. The sense organ is full of chemoreceptors, like stated over here, that can then undergo this pathway of sensing. Um, two examples of chemoreceptors you should know are gustation. Give me a sec, I'll explain what that means in just a second, and also olfaction. These are fancy ways, scientific ways of saying taste and smell. They both rely heavily on chemoreceptors within the sense organ, nose, and tongue. There are cells within them that have chemoreceptors that do exactly what we just outlined here in order for you to taste something sour, in order for you to smell something sweet, etc. That's all then the sweetness and the sourness, whatever it may be, is the perception by the brain, of course. And that covers our look at the sensory process. What we're going to do next is now begin uh, looking at a very specific part of sensation, and that's going to be all about the human ear.